<laughs> okay, so some weeks ago, we did a video where we mixed PTG with TPU to get extra high impact resistance. And that worked really well. But ever since then, I've been wanting to do it again, but with other materials to get extra strength from, let's say, more base materials. I really wanted to do this with a composite bow where we could have one material on one side that would stretch and another material on the other side that would compress well. Unfortunately, that was, uh, let's say, hard. So as mentioned in that video, a lot of materials don't like mixing with each other. They just print and then delaminate pretty much immediately or when you put a little bit of stress on it. So yeah, that didn't work out that well. But I love archery in general or just the, the idea of archery anyway. I don't I don't have a bow, um, not, not in real life. I, I play a lot of RPGs. I'm always the guy with the bow. And you have my bow. Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. But I'm scrapping the multi-material idea for the minute. Instead, for this project, I just want to build a bow that will work to the same performance as a normal hobby bow that you would buy and use for fun. Okay, so I know nothing about archery, really. Uh, I have read at least two Wikipedia articles. I used to be on an archery team as a kid, but I, I never really kept it up. Uh, but to those of you who are not familiar with archery, it is actually a very physically intensive activity. Because these bows, even the beginner bows, are designed so that the drawback on these strings are at least 12, 13, 14 kilos. And you're doing that for maybe an hour. And you're doing it every single minute. Uh, so your arm gets tired. It is, it is straining. But that's sort of the goal with this project. I want to design a bow that can pull back at least the same as a beginner bow. And the designs that I've seen online on Thingiverse and Printables and Maker World and such are not that great. Actually, the designs are pretty okay, but the materials used are not good choices. And in worst case scenarios, they're just not even tested. You go to a link and you see the design and it's a render. There's no photos of it printed. Uh, there's no makes, there's no comments, nothing. So you don't really know. You just have to try it. Untested for miniatures, different kind of bow. Really cute, but not what I'm looking for. For a rubber band, only tested in PETG, also only tried with PETG, probably just for fun, Zelda. In the best of cases, they're using PETG, which is not a material I would use in, in this case. PETG would probably just yield. It, it might not break, it might not shatter, but it will yield, and then you can't use it again. I'm probably safe from flying debris with PETG, maybe not PLA. I'm not even trying PLA, that's a terrible idea. PLA would be horrific. I would be like Pinhead from Hellraiser, except with shards of PLA instead of metal pins. But maybe that, that is a good idea. I mean, not with, not with PLA, that's a terrible idea. Uh, what I mean is starting with something like PETG and seeing where the faults are on the bow. And that's how I know what I need to redesign and improve. And at the end of it, we can make a bow out of like a really really strong material. All right, PETG. This is entirely PETG. This is six top and bottom layers, six perimeters, 30% infill, and it is our normal 3D Jake PETG. This is the riser, the part in the middle which joins the limbs, and this is the limb, and it's got a bit of flex to it, a little bit. I actually need the limb to resist bending, so a lot of force can be built up instead of just flexing it back all the way super easily. Flexibility is actually my enemy here. I need these to be relatively rigid. That's why modern bows are made out of fiberglass. So if I put too much force on this, it will flex to the point where it yields and I can't use it then. Uh, just so everyone knows what I mean by yield, if you put a force on something, put a stress on it, uh, then it might bend, but it might bend to the point where it deforms permanently. And that is the yield point. And if that happens, I can't use it again. So we're screwed. Uh, that's that's what I'm worried about. The other part I'm worried about is the screw holes I put in here. These are just there to hold the limb in place, and it's it's open on the other side, which which might not be a good idea, but we'll 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 find out. That's what testing's for. All right, screw fear. We're just gonna go for it. So we're gonna use a old luggage scales as our test apparatus, basically to pull on the limbs and see exactly how much strength they can take. And I have learned the hard way to use goggles. Always use goggles. Always use protective equipment. Protective equipment, protective equipment, protective equipment. But scars don't mean that you're experienced. They just mean that you're self-taught or clumsy. Or in my case, both. Okay. I'm nervous. 
One kilo. Two kilos. Ah, that doesn't sound nice. Three kilos. Four kilos. Five kilos. Ooh, jeez. <laughs> Six kilos. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ooh. Ouch. Yeah. Yes, I'm fine. <laughs> that is why you wear goggles. That was fun. Wow. I did not expect it to go so far, actually. We got between 9 and 10 kilos, and this is, the riser itself is totally undamaged. It's actually fine. Um, but the limbs did not fare that well. Now, this is actually not high infill. Instead, I use, like, tons of perimeters so that all of the layer lines are going in the same direction. So, technically, there is zero infill in here, uh, but it's, it's sort of also 100% filled. Um, so that did not so well. It broke where I thought it would break, right at the screws. I'm going to have to change that, but also I noticed that it kind of jostle around a bit. So I'm thinking the next time I redesign this, I'm going to have to do it so that the, the limbs are in totally, totally enclosed by the riser so that there's no fiddly parts. But 9 to 10 kilos, that wasn't bad. All right, nice. Okay, redesign time. So I've changed the riser so that it totally encloses the limbs. But we're not using PETG limbs this time. We are using PCTG limbs, which is a little more rigid than PETG. So hopefully it'll, it'll stand up to it. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna do it on the scales now, and I'm also very, very nervous about this one too. So wish me luck. Okay, we gotta beat nine kilos. Let's go for it. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, oops, eight, <laughs> oof, <sighs> oh wow, the riser broke, shit, <laughs> okay, that was interesting, so this time the limbs did survive, thank you, PCTG, you did well, uh, but the riser, Totally broke. This is a 30% infill, same as before, but it is PETG, so next time I have to print it out of a uh, stronger material. So I think I'm going to use PCTG for that one. Okay, so redesign time again. I've changed the limbs so that they are actually made out of PETG carbon fiber. This is form feature of carbon fill. It's a very, very tough filament. It has only a tiny bit of flex. It's, it's very rigid filament. And this is something that I use quite often if I need something strong. I go for carbon fill, it's great. Usually I don't go for nylon, it's a bit overkill, it's a bit expensive for the projects that I have, but carbon fill is, is perfect. It's just a great filament, you should use it. And for the riser this time, we're actually switching to PCTG. Okay, so here we are, next experimental piece, and we got their PETG carbon fiber limbs and a PCTG riser. Uh, yeah, let's, let's see how it goes. Let's do some flexing. Two kilos, three kilos, four, five, six, seven, ooh, eight, Nine, ten, oof, riser again. Okay, so like before, the riser did break. Uh, this is the weak point, so I'm gonna have to strengthen this a little bit. 
Um, yeah, PCDG just isn't enough for the, the riser to stay in one piece. Okay, let's redesign that and get back to it. All right, we're moving up to the big boys now. This is Nylon 6 with carbon fiber from Polymaker. This is the tough stuff. This is one of the strongest filaments we have, not including PEAK or PEI. And I just love carbon filament in general because it, it looks so nice. It has a really beautiful surface finish. And sometimes because of this, you actually forget how strong it is. It just looks so pretty. We were also using our new Polymaker poly dryer for drying it and storing it. This is a great option for nylon. Nylon is very hygroscopic, so uh, you really need to keep it away from moisture. We're also using our Creality K1 Max behind me to print it. It actually has a MicroSwiss Flowtech hot end on it with a MicroSwiss uh, CM2 nozzle. This is a great nozzle for abrasive materials because it has a copper chromium zirconium core. So there's great thermal conductivity, but the tip is hardened steel. So it's perfect for abrasive materials like carbon fiber. And here is our bow. Everything is made out of nylon carbon fiber, the riser and the limbs. It's very strong. An average beginner bow that you would buy in a shop has a draw weight of about 13 or 14 kilograms. If you're American, that's 30 pounds. Uh, if you're Irish, that's a half a 30 liter keg of Guinness. So if I can get this bow to draw 13 or 14 kilograms, uh, I will consider that a success. So this is our nylon carbon fiber piece. And I've beefed up the design a bit. So the same uh, point that broke for the last two ones, that's beefed up this fracture point right here. And as well at the edges of the riser where the limbs go in, this is beefed up as well. And also the limbs are considerably wider, but a little bit thinner as well. Oof, okay, let's see how this goes. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17 Ugh. 17 kilos doesn't sound like much but that's heavy <laughs> Shall we try it again keep going until it snaps i'm scared let's let's try i want to try if i can because i need to keep my hand on this all right test two let's see if i can get past 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Ah, we got the 20. Okay, uh, this thing is actually incredibly uncomfortable. The, the corners just kind of dig into my hand. Um, but I did print this this easy release for the bowstring. Um, hopefully that will work and it won't destroy my hand. But uh, yeah, okay, let's let's do the test. I'm excited. I, I designed this so that it would be very strong and wouldn't fall apart. And I completely forgot about comfort. It's literally biting into my skin. Go. Protective gear. Always use protective gear. Always use protective gear. That's much better. Okay, so we have these real arrows, which are comically long for, for this bow, it's tiny. So basically I just cut it in half and added this little PLA tip uh, as an arrowhead. I don't know how long that will last, but we'll find out. Uh, these were these were just totally unbalanced. They just literally fell out when I was trying to fire them, but these work pretty well, I think. I'm sorry. Seriously. <laughs> oh, fuck. We gotta switch things around. Okay, learning outcomes. So this is strong, but it's a really, really uncomfortable bow 
to handle, especially when you're drawing like 15 kilos plus weight. Um, I really need to redesign the riser so that it's more of a, like a hand grip and then maybe also uh, an additional grip out of TPU or, or SEBS for extra grip. Um, but it's, it's really strong. I also need to add like a, a, a knocking point here on the bowstring. Um, so that it, it grabs onto the arrow a little easier and it's a little easier on my fingers as well. Um, I might also redesign the, the easy release that we have here. This is good, but it's a bit too small for my fingers and I want to have something that is kind of like pinch operated. But that is all for another day. I'm really happy and slightly injured with how this all went. It's very strong. It's probably actually too strong for me and my puny gamer arms. I wonder what a seasoned archer would make of this. If you guys have any questions about the bow or the materials that we use, you can let us know in the comments below or you can write us an email. You can also join us on our Discord server where there is talk on a daily basis. The link is down below and we'll see you guys next time. Later.